You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art ed? Try to spice it. Who art is Mr. Wood <laughs> art ed me? Yeah. Either way, it, it, it's ambiguous. It, it works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and for this week's Fun Fact Friday, we're going to be talking about a mysterious work of art, or I guess a mysterious collection of artworks, the Nazca Lines. In the Peruvian desert, there are a number of glyphs, images that are etched into the desert landscape. They are absolutely massive, and to this day, there's a lot of mystery surrounding them. In 1930, people were flying over the Nazca Desert, and they noticed there appeared to be lines etched creating massive shapes of a variety of animals and other sort of abstracted figures. Nobody was quite sure what they were. To this day, nobody's sure exactly how or why they were created, even when they were created. One of the first mysterious bits about this is geologists believe that the Nazca lines, these geoglyphs, were created between the years 400 and 600 CE. To start off, just to to define terms and understand what we're talking about, geo is referring to the earth or the soil, and a glyph is basically an image, a drawing. These geoglyphs are etched into the earth. The Nazca Desert has a red, rocky sort of topsoil, but deep underneath that, or I guess really not that deep underneath it, there is a much lighter colored, almost white undersoil. And so the way that these were created, people about 1,500 years or so, give or take, uh, etched these lines by basically digging into the soil, into that rocky desert landscape, and revealing that lighter colored underbelly. These are absolutely massive designs. Some of these lines are miles long. Um... And yet, as I said, they weren't really discovered, or I guess I should say rediscovered, because I'm pretty confident the people who etched those lines kind of knew they were there. But they were rediscovered in 1930 because they weren't really visible as designs from the ground level. Until we had aviation that brought people into the air, until we got that perspective looking down on it, People really couldn't see these designs, which really begs the question, how were they created? Not so much physically how were they dug out, but how were they planned and executed to make these massive straight lines and winding paths around the desert to form spiders and birds and monkeys and other things that would be recognizable from from the sky? Now, of course, while some of us get caught up on the how were these planned and executed, another very common question is why? Why would people create these images that could not be seen? I mean, I've always thought the whole point of art is to show it off. But 1,500 years ago, they couldn't get up into the sky to look down on these images. So who was the audience for this work? The most common theory is that the audience for this work was the eye in the sky. Um, People have noted that there were eclipses at that time, and some people say that the corona, the sun shining around a solar eclipse, can have the effect of looking like a pupil, an eye in the sky looking down. And many people have speculated, I think the most common speculation is that the Nazca lines are images that serve a sort of religious significance. They were artworks created as offerings to the gods, to the eye in the sky, for the gods to behold what they were creating and offering to them. Now, one of the final things I'm going to share about the Nazca lines, which I find absolutely fascinating, is to think about they were preserved for about 1,500 years before anybody even knew they were there. And Art preservation can be a quite difficult task, so many people might wonder, how were these lines preserved when nobody was there to take care of them because nobody even knew they were there? 
The answer is the desert in Nazca, it's it's rocky. These are made in rock, not sand. And so just by that fact alone, it's going to hold up to the elements quite well. But also in a desert, in that particular climate, there's really not a lot of erosion happening. So it's largely just either well-planned out uh, placement by the Peruvian people back in the day, or just a wonderful, happy accident. But for whatever reason, the Nazca lines have held up for about 1,500 years, and we have every reason to believe that they will hold up for centuries to come for people to enjoy. So as you venture out into the world, as you travel, try to Be aware of your surroundings. Take your eye off the screens and look down at the landscapes as you fly overhead. You might just discover something amazing that's gone unnoticed and unappreciated for generations. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted? If you found this tolerable, please like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week in the show notes on Twitter at WoodArtEd and on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.